We see a wholesome pastor. Amen. Start from the bottom house, you know, he start from the bottom house, he share mm. from, from the restaurant, he share church with different pastors. Mm -hmm. But you always maintain the wholesomeness. Yeah. And these times we go to church, we gotta pass bodyguards before we reach the pastor. <laughs> we gotta left a note in order to see the pastor. But he's one on one with us. And he's a good shepherd that's leading us. As there's a saying, Jesus opened the gate, the shepherd followed, and then the sheep. So I've no further ado, we just pass this on. Pastor Peters. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so far for your participation in worship. Just want to give God a high note of praise for being in the midst this morning. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And when we keep confessing that verse, amen, what we get? Liberty. Amen. Liberty means freedom. Praise the Lord. I have a special. Um, guest with us this morning. So Hallelujah. It is a lot to me and my wife and my family. Praise God. Praise God. Um, speaking about mother and uh, sister, um, Cheryl McDonald. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor, praise God. And um, both of us, we grew up together in a small village. I don't know if Brother Ronald could remember Brother Richard McDonald. Praise God. But we all came from the, that village. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. I thank God that his wife being having fellowship with us this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. His daughter. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I must say that I uh, was just rubbing her last night. She's God of defense attorney. Amen. Hallelujah. By profession, she's a lawyer. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. So I'm going to give them an opportunity to say something before I proceed with the word that God has put in my spirit. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Cheryl, praise God. Amen. Praise God. She's very healthy. Amen. 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 Praise, Amen. God. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise, praise God. I give God praise and thanks for being here once again. Thank you, God. Uh, if I remember, it was here the last time I came with it was in March. And I've done um, a total replacement, like your praise God. pastor. <laughs> and God has been good as I was able to return. Yes, and Lord. the second one. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And God is so good. Mm -hmm. I did it on the Thursday. Yes. And look at and you. On the Sunday, I was able to attend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And um, when I didn't get the medication at the time, because it was, I think, um, Veterans Weekend. And um, so my sister, and I, she was with me, and she was telling me, um, we got to get this medication, we got to get this medication. So happened when I did get the medication, I got a strange dream. I don't know what it is, but person said, you know, maybe the narcotics that they gave you. Because of your pain. And I was, I never, in my life, I said, no, nah, this guy, because all, all I, all I see is that demons. I said, but I'm not afraid. Because hey, not hallelujah. Afraid, right? And then after, um, I realized that my other daughter, one of my other daughter, she's a pharmacist, and she had given me some medication to walk with. I said, you know what? I ain't using this. Nah, I'm going to use it. And I'm going to tell you, I'm using that medication. I stopped what the doctor gave me here. And I'm able to be here. It's not three weeks. Hallelujah. It's not three weeks I'm able to walk. I went shopping, but not much walking. <laughs> right? But God is really good. Amen. I'm standing here. I'm not feeling anything. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. And the, the medication has reduced, and I cut it. Yes, praise God. 
Michelle. Yes, I am Lord. Not Thank you, Jesus. And I say God is really good. Yes, and amen. he allows things to happen. Yes. Amen. amen. I must yes. say thanks to um, Pastor Roy, Sister yes. Morden, because I came. Hallelujah. And I was told everything is okay. And then a few days before the surgery, she got a call to say, ask him if I'm still doing the surgery. So she said yes. So then they said, well, they have some papers to be signed. Everything is not right. So I don't know. If she would be able to do the surgery, and I'm openly um, thanking my sisters and sisters Hallelujah. signing thank up you for me, and I was Amen. able to do the Amen. surgery. Hallelujah. And went well. Yes, thank and you, I Jesus. Yes. Our sister here was very helpful. Yes. She yes. was doing the the typing and the, yeah. the let you know yeah. things uh, work and so. And I praise God and give you thanks because. You may not know, but you would have played a part in your prayers and so on. Amen. And I thank you very much. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't have such a large one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. God is good. It is such a pleasure to be here. I feel. Like, I'm part of the Jacob's Ladder Ministry. Hallelujah. Because since I was small, I've been hearing about Jacob's Ladder. <laughs> My grandmother, whenever she came, she would tell us about um, Jacob's Ladder. I remember hearing the name Sister Antelin. <laughs> and um, it's such a pleasure actually being here and fellowshipping here. Yes, Lord. I want to give God praise and thanks yes, because God. up to this morning, when I was praying and thinking of the goodness of God, yeah. I realized that even though God is the same yesterday and for today and forever, when you get to know him, mm -hmm. every day you get to, to learn a new dimension. Yeah. 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 And with every stage of my life, I was remembering, like, I got mm -hmm. to know God in a whole new way. Mm -hmm. I got it, saved at the age of seven. Wow. My mother led yeah. me to Christ. And the, the relationship I had with God at seven has transformed hey, into um, the relationship that I have now. Every stage of my life, when I was a student, I got to know him as a guide and a friend. Hallelujah. When I got um, started working, I got to know him as the true defense attorney. <laughs> Now that I'm married and I'm assisting my husband in ministry and so on, I got Come to on. know the Lord in yes, such a new dimension. Yes, yes. And I want to encourage you to always trust in God and yes. keep your relationship with God vibrant. No yes, matter Lord. what is going on, you just get to know God. Just tune in to God, read his word, pray, and he will reveal more and more of himself. Yes, to you. Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. Praise God. You know, last night, um, while we finished talking, and I, I went to bed before I actually got into the first Amen. Praise God. I don't know your husband too well, but he came, you know, it was a flash before me, you know. Praise God. But I believe in prayer. Continue to pray to him. He's a man of God. He's a potential pastor. Amen. 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 Oh, Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. That's a good confirmation. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Oh God. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Travel with me to the book of Exodus chapter 17. Praise God. Exodus chapter 17. I'm going to be reading a few verses. And after I finish reading these few verses, I'm going to ask um, Sister Rennie, praise God, to come and pray for this Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Verse 8. Exodus chapter 17 and verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. 
And Moses said unto Joshua, follow these verses very closely, church. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and her stayed up his hands. And one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under the sun for his God. Sister Annie. God, we give you praise and we give you thanks, O God. We thank you for your word, O Lord. Even now, O God, I thank you, O God, for meeting every need with the word this morning. I thank you, O God, for searching our hearts. Hallelujah. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, O God. I thank you for opening our lives, helping us to open our lives, O God, to hear your word and to apply it, O Lord. Thank you, I come against any spirit of destruction. I come against any spirit that the enemy may try to seek into this building, oh God. Thank and I pray Jesus. in the name of Jesus that your word will come forth, that your word will go forth mm. and minister to each and every yes, heart. Lord. Hallelujah. I pray for transformation. I pray for deliverance. I pray for understanding. Yes, yes Lord. I pray for knowledge, wisdom, mm. and most of all, oh Lord, I pray for a complete revelation of mm. who you are. And Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Um, I want to share with you the topic this morning. Amen. When Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. Amen. Amen. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose men and go out and fight with Amalek. Now, up to this point, God had fought for Israel. But now the divine command to Joshua is to go and fight your enemy. Now this is precisely the divine uh, instruction that uh, Moses gave to the young warrior Joshua. Now by the word choose, Joshua would have to go and select the most competent, capable, and well-trained men to prepare them to fight the enemy. Now, this is what God said about our enemies in Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 19. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is the Holy Spirit, will lift up a standard against him. Now, notice this verse didn't say the enemy is the flood. It says when the enemy shall comes in like a flood. Now God is comparing the enemy like a flood. Now this is exactly church. This is what is going to happen when you are out of fellowship with God. When you are out from under the covering of God. When you are no longer studying the word of God, when you're no longer meditating on the word of God and being prayerful, the enemy, I guarantee you, will surely come in like a flood. Now, one of the most effective ways to avoid the enemy that comes in like a flood is to resist the enemy. 
In James chapter 4 and verse 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, this verse is a powerful weapon to use against the enemy that comes in like a flood. When the devil comes to harass you, resist him. When the devil comes to harass you, don't talk about what the devil is doing. If you talk what the devil is doing, he will hang around you. Just resist him and he will flee from you. Remember, he's not going to flee from God, but he's going to flee from you because God gives you the authority to resist him. Amen? Amen? Now, the phrase, lift up a standard, is a reference to the word of God under the old covenant, but it also applies, amen, under the new covenant as well. Amen? Now, the word was the standard that was lifted up against the enemy that comes in like a flood. So Joshua, go out and fight the enemy. However, how many of you know, church, that we as born-again Christians under the new covenant, we don't have to go out onto the battlefield to fight a physical battle. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty true God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Now, our weapons are not the weapons of this world that men prize, amen, and fashion with pride. But the weapons that we, the believers, have is found in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13 and 17, amen, which points to the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the garment of truth, the sword of the spirit, and our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, amen. God has equipped us with weapons to defeat Satan, amen, and his demons, amen. Satan and his demons are his henchmen, amen. They have a tight grip on this world that we live in, amen. But as believers, we must stand our ground, amen, and obey our commander-in-chief, who is Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, amen. amen. However, the entrance of the new nature is the beginning of a spiritual warfare, amen, with the old Adamic nature. And that's why the book of Ephesians tells us, amen, for, praise God, for if God, if God be for us, who can be against us, amen? Praise God, hallelujah. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. Now, after Moses gave the young warrior Joshua this divine instruction to go and fight Amalek, notice what Moses said about himself personally, amen, in the same verse. He told Joshua, tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hands. Now, a rod is a staff, stick. Amen. Or a pole with many uses. Amen. For example, it is an instrument of punishment or a mark of authority. But the rod that Moses was carrying was more than just a simple rod. Amen. This was no ordinary rod. This was a miracle walking rod that God instructed Moses to use in the past in Exodus chapter 4 and verse 17. This was the same rod Moses used to strike the rock in the wilderness and water flow out of it for the children of Israel. This was the same rod Moses used to strike in and the Nile and it turned into blood. Exodus chapter 7 and verse 20. This was the same rod in Moses' hand that God turned into a snake, amen, in Exodus chapter 4 and verse 3. But this miracle walking rod 
in Moses' hand was a reminder to him that the only present God was with Moses, amen, wherever he goes. Amen. And by the word only present, it means that God is everywhere at the same time. Amen. The Bible says the heavens cannot contain him. That means he's bigger than his creation. Amen. Amen. Now verse then says, and Joshua did as Moses has said unto him. Now this indicates that Joshua followed his mentor instruction. Listen, it is good to be mentored by a pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I term that as leadership and accountability. Amen. For example, in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 2, amen to 6, praise God. It says, uh, notice in 2 Kings chapter 2, and you can read it, verse 2 to 6. But notice, amen, in these verses, how closely Elisha followed the prophet Elijah. The Lord sent Elijah to Bethel. And Elisha said, I will not leave you. The Lord sent Elijah to Jericho. And Elisha said, I will not leave you. The Lord sent Elijah to Jordan. And Elisha said, I will not leave you. Now notice, the prophet Elijah urged Elisha to stay behind. And Elisha said three times, I will not leave you. Elisha refused to stay behind. Amen, praise God. Now in serving the man of God, serving Elijah, just as Joshua did under Moses, Elisha learned the secret of spiritual success. Amen. And that is to serve your leader. Amen. That is a praise that to serve the man of God. That is to serve your pastor, not Amen. to challenge him. Amen. Even though you may have more, praise God, education in the natural, amen, you just humble yourself and serve him because that is what you call obedience to the word of God. And when you obey the word of God, amen, that's where the blessings come. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Now, if you serve well, you will lead well. Amen. amen. Praise God. So Elijah, praise God, and Elisha went together. It's always good, amen, to stay close to the man of God. Amen. Stay close to the leader and allow him to mentor you. Amen. amen. Praise God. Because when he moves off of the scenes, now praise God, amen, you are well equipped. You are well punished, amen, praise it. In addition to what you learn from him, amen, God, amen, will enlighten you with more revelations. Amen. 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 Now, notice, back to the original text. And Joshua fought with Amalek. Now, what's this warfare? While Joshua was fighting the Amalek, Moses and Aaron went up to the top of the hill. Now what we notice here is that Moses, Aaron, and her did not participate in the actual battle. They were not involved in the physical battle with Joshua. However, we are told in verse 11 says, when Moses held up his hand, amen, praise God, what happened? Israel prevailed. Now, this pertains to the fact that while Joshua was fighting a physical battle, God, Moses lifted up his hands, meaning he was engaged in an intense, amen, spiritual warfare on behalf of Israel. Amen. God, hallelujah. Now, while the physical battle was taking place, at the same time, a spiritual battle was in progress. Right now, somebody's praying for you, and you may not even be aware of it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's why the Bible says we have to pray without ceasing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And by the way, also pray. The reason why somebody's praying for you, remember also, while somebody's praying for you, some people is praying against you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. As long as Moses keeps his hands lifted up to God in prayer, 
and with the powerful miracle walking rod in his hand, Israel continued to win the fight and victory was assured. Amen. God, hallelujah. Listen, it was Moses uplifted hands in prayer determined the outcome of the battle in favor of Israel. Yes. Amen. Listen, no battle is won without God's divine intervention. Amen. Now, although Joshua was leading in a physical battle, amen, it was Joshua, as a matter of fact, it wasn't Joshua battle plan, military prowess, and his own strategy that won the battle. Amen. amen? No, it was God who gave Israel the victory as a result of Moses' warfare prayer. Amen? Now, this is this church. We don't have to approach our spiritual battle in life by focusing on our own strength. Amen? Praise God. The psalmist said, the Lord is the strength of my life. God told Zerubbabel in Zechariah, he said, it is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by my spirit, thus saith the Lord. Amen? Amen? Praise God. We don't have to focus on our own strategy. We don't have to focus on our own resources. Instead, we must do like Moses, lift up our hands and praise God in the midst of situation. Lift up your hands and praise God in the midst of crisis. Lift up and lift up your voice and praise God with a voice of triumph. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The easiest thing to do is to praise God when you're going through the storms in life. Amen. Praise God. Just open up your mouth. That's why he gives you the mouth. Amen. It's to praise him. The psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make it boast in the Lord. The humble shall it thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And the Lord delivered me from all of my fear. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So God gives the courage. Amen. And Israel, they were victorious. This is parallel to what Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, amen, says. In all these things, in all these things, we are more than conqerors. Now, if this verse tells us we are just conqerors, it would have been enough. But it says we are more than conqueror. Amen. You see, a conqueror has a survival instinct. Yes. A conqueror has a winner's mentality. Yes. He's not a quitter. Every battle he fought, he is successful. Amen. He overcome his enemy. He overcome his opponent. He overcome opposition. Praise God. And all those who are against you, praise God. Amen. And when you overcome something, it doesn't have any more power. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, church, to be more than a conqueror, to be more than a conqueror, amen, praise God, you must continue, amen, studying the word of God, meditating on the word of God, and being prayerful, amen, praise God. Now, oh God, hallelujah. Mm. So, we overcome the enemy, we overcome opposition, and we overcome anything that is against us. Amen. Praise God. Now, to be more than a conqueror is to exercise authority over Satan. Amen. Praise God. And his dominion of darkness. Amen. Praise God. That's how you overcome. Now, you are not going to overcome. Because you have already overcome. The word says we have overcome them. Amen. We have overcome death. Sometimes, praise God, the word, some of these verses is in the present tense. But sometimes we postpone it into the future tense. Amen. And we miss the blessings. 
Amen. Praise God. But the verse said, we have overcome them. And the reason why we have overcome them is because the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. So we are pregnant with the presence of God inside of us. Amen. So, when Moses let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. This means when Moses stopped praying, the enemy began to win the fight. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. And in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, Jesus said, men ought always to prayer and not to faint. Now the word faint in this verse does not mean lost of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because when you lost consciousness, you were no longer aware of your thoughts and action. Right. Amen. However, the word faith here means not to lose courage in our relationship with God. Amen. Praise that we must keep studying the word of God and being constantly in fellowship. Amen. Zoom is good, but was for the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. The Bible said, don't neglect the gathering of the assembly. Amen. Sheep needs to be together. Yes. Yes. Amen. We need to be together as a sheep fold. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Iron sharp and iron. Yes. Amen. I feel when we when we fellowship together, amen. We discern things. Yes. Amen. Praise God. And I thank God for the spirit of discernment. Amen. That he has given to me. Praise God. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now, now notice. Amen. We have to continue to be prayerful. We must continue to pray. Amen. Until we get results. Amen. So verse 12 says. And Moses' hands were heavy. My God. Now this means Moses' hands grew physically weary on the mountain. But although he was physically burnt out, amen, spiritually, Moses was still in God's glorious presence. Amen. In his presence, there is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand, there are pleasure forevermore, amen. It's always good to be in God's presence, and how? Amen, by just praising him. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. That means he lives in our praises. Amen. He resides in our praises. Amen. He takes up residence in our praises. Amen. And when you are a praiser, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sickness. Amen. Prayer cannot have dominion over you. God, hallelujah. I'm not saying that you're not going to feel pain, but you continue to praise God, amen, and the praises will keep that pain in subjection. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah, praise God, amen. That's why the Bible said God inhabit the praises of his people. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice here. And they took stone and put it on him and he sat on it. Mm -hmm. Now, after realizing the importance of keeping Moses' outstretched hand to God, both Aaron and Hor took stone and put it under Moses. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, the stone, as I study this verse in depth, the stone is a symbol of Jesus Christ as the foundation of the New Testament church. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, he said, I will, I will build my church. Amen. Praise God. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Now the gates of hell represent Satan and all the evil in the world that is trying to destroy the church. True immorality, doctrinal errors, false teachers infiltrating the church, and those who abandon the faith. But the church will continue to triumph over hell by God's sovereign grace, wisdom, and power. A true church 
cannot fall. No matter what. Amen. Once that church is built on the principle, amen, and foundation of God's holy word, that church cannot collapse. Amen. 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 The church will always be victorious against hell. In closing notice, when Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. Yeah. Amen. Now cross over with me to Daniel chapter 10 and verse 12. Here we see another warfare. Amen. It says, from the first day that thou set thy heart to understand. Now the first day speaks of Daniel prayer or petition before God. Now, on the first day, God commissioned the angel to go to Daniel. Now, when the angel came to Daniel, notice, amen, the angel told Daniel, I come for thy word. I come for thy word. This means the angel came to receive Daniel's prayer that God already answered. God, we're going to see the warfare here. Praise God. Amen? But the angel would explain to Daniel why, amen, praise God, there was a delay with the answer that Daniel was expecting. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 13, the angel told Daniel, but the prince of Persia withstood me. That's what the angel is saying. The prince of Persia withstood me for 21 days. That is almost three weeks. Yes. Amen? Now, what is now? The prince of Persia was not an ordinary human ruler. Because no ordinary human ruler could detain an angel. Amen? Amen? Now, during that time, there was an earthly prince that ruled Persia. But right above the earthly kingdom of Persia, in the spirit world, there was an evil prince ruling that nation. Every nation has a demonic spirit assigned to it. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The earthly kingdom of Persia. Amen. Now, this evil prince was a powerful evil spirit who resists the angel forcefully. Amen. Because he did not want the angel to take God's answer as a result of Daniel's prayer. Now, sometimes, amen, when we pray, we may not receive the answer, amen, to our prayer instantly or immediately. But this does not mean that God did not answer your prayer. There is a warfare that is taking place. In a demonic realm to block your prayer. That's why you have to continue to pray without ceasing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. You got to continue to pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Because there's a fight. Your prayer doesn't reach heaven so easily. Hallelujah. And if you're living in sin, it is not going to reach you because the demons know exactly. Amen. They're going to block it. Come and God can't do anything about it. Amen. Because sin, what it does, it gives the devil legality to your life. Mm. Amen. Praise God. You see, amen. So because of uh, Daniel knows, as I said, amen, this does not mean that God did not answer prayer. But because prayer is spiritual warfare, mm. always remember that prayer is spiritual warfare. Don't take it lightly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Expect your prayer to be delayed by satanic forces in the spirit world as was in the case with Daniel's prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now as believers, we must continue to persevere in prayer and not to be discouraged. You see, Daniel wasn't discouraged. Amen. Daniel continued to pray until God sent reinforcement. Amen. Amen. Notice what the angel told Daniel. Amen. And behold, Michael, one of the chief prince, came to help me. Amen. Now, Michael is known as God's angel of war. 
Satan is afraid of this particular angel. Amen. Praise God. I said, I call him God, bad boy angel. <laughs> Amen. Now, the angel said to Michael, Amen. Notice, the angel said, Michael. Now, this tells us that there are different ranks of angel. And some are more powerful than others. Amen. Now, finally, when the angel was rescued by Michael on the 21st day, the angel get through with the answer to Daniel. But God had to send reinforcement. Finally, after Moses died, God called Joshua into leadership and guarantee his presence. God knew that Joshua will struggle with doubt and fear as the new leader of his people. Therefore, God built a foundation of hope on these words in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5. God told Joshua, there shall no man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. God. He said, I will never leave you. Always remember that God said, I will never leave you. No matter what you're going through in life. Remind God what he said in his word concerning you. Amen, praise God. Remember, put him in remembrance. The Bible says put him in remembrance. But who are we to remind God? We can only remind God what he said in his word concerning us. Amen, praise God. He said, I will never leave thee. And I will never. Friends will leave you. Family will leave you. Children will leave you. Relatives will leave you. But I guarantee you, God will never, will never, will never, will never, will never, God will never leave us. God will never force it. That's why you have to put him first. Put him first. He said, seek him first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. Amen. Praise God. Now listen, when God called people to serve him. He will often use their area of strength. But God, sometimes he surprises us. Amen. Praise God. By working through our weakness. Amen. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, for when I am weak, amen, I am strong. And God said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. But remember, his strength, praise God, is made perfect in weakness. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Remember this, outward circumstances and situation, trials and these things, it doesn't bring joy. Amen? Praise God. But when we begin to praise God, that joyful feeling begins to bubble up within us. Amen? So I'm going to close here. Praise God. Thank you so much for listening. To God be the glory. And great things he has done. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God.